Welcome to Drum and Drummer, a podcast focused on drums, drumming and drummers. I'm George Pickering and that's Ben Winty and we are both professional drummers in this business we call music. So stick around and join us as we pass the time whilst trying to stay in time. Ready for your holiday? Fuck off, <laughs> that's mental. Morning George. Guten Morgen. Curious George. Curious. By Curious George. By gosh. Uh, it's another drum and drummer. Yep. Hello. Hello. From wherever you are listening to this. Yeah. Episode 47. Bosh. Mm. Another one. R- rattling through. <laughs> rattling through the weeks. What's going on, boy? Well, a lot, a lot, a lot to talk about. So let's try and cram it in. Let's do it. First of all, well, I've got two gigs to talk about. First gig I've got to talk about was the most Phoenix Knights gig place of all time. And I'm aware that the singer of this band now listens to the pod. So yes, I am talking about the gig we played, Lennon, if you're listening. Um, it was an 80th birthday party. 80th? 80th. Wow. Yeah. And it was just a big, you know, just like a, a working men's club, just a big sort of community hall. Sure. Just It's just a big square room and there was a buffet and it was all chicken legs, volivons, cheesecake. And we sound checked and I was conscious that it was an 80th birthday party and everyone there was around that age. And I didn't want to play too loud. So anyway, we start the first set. <laughs> this is insane. We played about three or four songs. And then we finished a song and we could hear music like we'd left the playlist on or something. We're like, oh, fuck, has someone left the playlist on? And Lucy went to the laptop, had a look, no songs playing. We realized the bar at the other side of the room had just started playing music behind the bar they'd obviously we'd made so little of an impression playing that they went oh, let's just whack some music on so then the we singer need... there's an atmosphere in this yeah. room should we just yeah. it's, it was ridiculous so then lennon had to be like sorry could we turn the music off on the bar please and we had to wait till they turned it off so we could carry on our set and at that point we were like well let's just play louder because you know, we clearly haven't been making an impression. So we finished our first set. No one is really that asked because it was weird. Like, the, well, they're they all just, nearly dead. They're all nearly dead. They just opened the cling film on the buffet. So everyone's chowing down on that while we're playing. But then the only other thing I had to say, which was just awful about this gig, was we finished our first set and two young lads, I don't know, teens, late teens, and their dad came up to us. Oh, lads, really good set. Re- loved it. Loved it so much. I'm like, what's your angle? What's your game? Where are you going with angle. this? Yeah. And they were hanging about for a while. And they were like, oh, is it all right if, if we play a song? Ah. Oh, fuck's sake. And it was the two lads. And the dad was trying to be really sort of like, go on, let them play. Let them play. They just want to play Live Forever by Oasis. Of course, of course they do. do. Yeah. Of course they do. And poor old Joe was left to deal with them. And they were trying to get a go on Lennon's guitar. And Lennon was, you know, saying like, I can't because of, you know, insurance and stuff. And he was just saying all these things. And the dad was like, well, how much is it if he, if he breaks the guitar? And Lennon was like, about a grand. He's like, yeah, I'll pay that if anything happens. Like, oh, no, you sake. won't. No, yeah. you won't. <laughs> that, yeah. And um, you want to pay, you want to risk paying a thousand pounds to just let your cunt of a son exactly. play a song. Exactly. No, you don't. So anyway, after like half an hour, Lennon gave in. And oh, Lennon. I know, I know. Hold and strong. You got a hold. Oh, you man. got a hold, yeah. And Let's hoddle. These two lads got up and started playing Live Forever. And What was the other lad doing? Well, one was singing, one was playing guitar. Right, okay. So, yeah, sorry. And, uh, and then they finished and I was like, okay, we're done. Sort of like, that's done. And then I thought that was it. And then Lennon goes up on stage to, I don't know, get the guitar back or something. And I can see him trying to find a capo for this young lad. Already from the capo, I know what's coming next. (laughs) I know it's going to be Wonderwall. (laughs) So anyway, he puts the capo on the guitar. The guy didn't know how to put a capo on. 
puts the capo on and then he strums the first chord of Wonderwall and Joe, the guitarist, stands to me and goes, we all know what that chord means. And then uh, it starts Wonderwall and I was just like, sake. And you, right, this is, right, I, I've got to say this without sounding bitter because I remember being in that position. Like when you play to a room full of people and you're nervous and you're young, after you've done it, it's like, wow, that was, that was exciting. Whereas when I was doing that exact same gig, I was like, this is awful. You know, no one's watching. Everyone's eating from the buffet. But they finished playing and the lads came off and they were kind of acting like they just played Wembley. They were like, fucking hell, I need a pint, dad. That was a fucking, that was a gig and a half, wasn't it? And I was just like, shut up. But also I didn't want to be too huntish because like, I get it. Do you know what I mean? I remember doing that and being like, wow, that was scary, but we did it. But also I was like, shut the fuck up. Do you know what I mean? And then, yeah, we finished the second set. No encore, you know? Yeah. Okay. This is our last song finished. And then that was it. Well, they got to load and, them all into the bus and get Well, yeah. And most people have gone home anyway. And I was just like, this is, this is very Phoenix nights, but um, yeah, just, you know, I think afterwards Lennon sort of apologized. He's like, Sorry about this. <laughs> Sorry about this gig. <laughs> it's like it's all right. It's something to do. But yeah, that was that gig. Um, shall I show? Should we talk about the other mad gig thing I had? Or yeah, dive straight in. I'll get all my shit out of the way first. So this is mental. So in the last episode before the interview, I spoke about how I was in France. So the day. I was coming back from France the next day I had a gig and it was the morning of the Friday gig was on the Saturday. And in the morning we get a message from the manager, Ben Otterson. And he says, big up the ox, being up, big up the ox, strong as an ox. baby." He basically just said in a, like a voice message at 9am, the client wants to cancel her band, the band for tomorrow. She isn't answering the phone. She still owes two grand. Do you want to offer a one grand discount? Everyone gets 200 quid and then gets the night off. We were like, yeah. Basically, he made us the option of do you want 200 quid and we don't do the gig? Or do you want to try and get the full fee and you have to still do the gig and stuff? And we were like, I'll take 200 quid, you know, and yeah. not go So anywhere. this is, this can happen yeah. where your gig essentially gets cancelled yeah at incredibly short notice and forgoing all the covid stuff mm. this has happened to most people i know yeah and you know contracts have been signed and money should have been paid by then and when it's such short notice and usually it comes down to the client it's usually i don't know how to put it but they they fucked up yeah like or they they're lying yeah, they're lying for whatever reason they give, they're lying, or they realise they can't afford it, or mm. some shit's going down. But what they always seem to forget is they've signed a contract. Yeah, yeah. That means they have to pay the entire fee in full, even if they yeah. don't want the band. And we're talking this is one day's notice. This is a yeah. twenty-four hours notice, and this has happened to yeah a lot of people. And what can be done? from the band's point of view is and quite often is we'll go you know because technically we should be entitled to the full fee yeah you know contracts have been signed and i know there has been cases of bands taking the client and through the agency taking them to court to, to mm. get the money you know mm. but what can happen is is you make a counter offer mm. and you go because sometimes the reason is they've split up you know they don't yeah, like, someone's yeah. become seriously ill things whatever the reason but sometimes you go do you know what we'll just take less money yeah we'll, we'll go back and say look just give us a bit of money and that means we don't have to travel but what we can't have is just getting no money yeah because a contract was signed for us to go and play a gig and that's mm. been in our diary for a long time and that's a day we then can't accept any other work and the yeah. band can't accept any other gigs and we can't accept any other work with other bands or studio or whatever else you do so a counter offer is yeah is made and we'll go do you know what we'll just just give us a it's almost like a token sum of money yeah you know and it but this 
There's something about this one that is just very well, bizarre. So before, so the reason the ox sent us that message was because he got an email saying, I'm so sorry I've been conned. By the way, I'm reading through the spelling errors in this. I'm so sorry I've been conned with all my decorations, dance floor, aisle, makeup, everything I spent thousands of pounds on. Uh, I won't be able to afford the band as I've had to try and find these to fill my venue. Basically, she's saying every other aspect that she's paid for, she's been conned and has to rebuy it. And we all immediately went sympathetic and just went, oh, my God, that's awful the day before your wedding to get conned. You know, we didn't even think she's trying to scam us. We just thought that's awful. So, yeah, that was our counter offer, 200 quid. And uh, we were all like, yeah, that sounds great. Let's do that. Well, I would like to jump in there because I've yeah. got the email in front of me as well. You know, she says, I'm so sorry. I'm heartbroken and stressed. I haven't mm. slept all night. My worst nightmare. Yeah. But there's not a lot I can do. I understand you keep the deposit. And then there's another bit I don't quite understand. But my initial thing is, again, that's the, sorry, love. It's not just the deposit you lose. Yeah. You've, you've not just lost the deposit. Yeah. And she's clearly not paid the full balance seven days in advance of the event, which is what yeah. should happen. And we get it with recording as well. Even they don't think they should lose the deposit. Mm. Like, well, that's why we have a deposit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, you got to go, okay, if this lady's been conned out of everything else for her wedding. Yeah. She's decided that she can't have the band. But you've signed a contract. Yeah. That means you got to pay for the band. Exactly. So that so us saying just give us this money so we all get two hundred quid was us being nice. So then that was at about midday. We were a saying, lot of that fee that she owed is essentially yes. covering travel. Well, I forgot to say yes. Yeah, so gig was van hire and things. So you're going yeah. well if we don't have to go to Nottingham. Yes, that money doesn't need to be spent. So we'll yeah. we'll take that off. Yeah, and we'll just take a slightly reduced fee yeah because we don't have to go and do anything yeah is that i think it was basically like rather than us each get 400 quid or 350 it was yeah we'll just take yeah we'll assume that we're not getting a hotel because we're not now so anyway we sent all that to her and then she just didn't reply you know people were trying to call her email her and then at 4 p.m the ox replied client still hasn't confirmed what the fuck is going on She's been spoken to on the phone and sent the offer, but she said she's out buying a shirt and not read any emails today. Office are going to call at half four to make a final decision. And then at that point, we were all like, well, fuck her. Do you know what I mean? Like sympathy went out the door and then everyone started making good points. You know, Lucy was like, there's no way I'd let someone, I don't know. It sounded like she just had this package that she paid for that got the DJ her makeup, everything. And she, she Lucy she was like... a wedding off the back of a van. Yeah, Lucy was like, In no woman... Forecourt. Yeah, would ever get like a package that has the hair and makeup and DJ in the same package, yeah. you know? I'm looking to book a dance floor. Yeah, we got a dance floor. <laughs> cool, I just need to now find someone to do my makeup. Well, we do that as well. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's good. Yeah, we'll get Gaz. Gaz, yeah. you, you're all right with that, aren't you? You do makeup. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, so after that, the whole band switched and we're like, ah, this seems dodgy actually now. I That's think it, she's, yeah. you know. So anyway, Chloe then sent, Chloe who works for Taylor, sent a final email saying, if we don't hear from her by 9pm tonight, the band will not travel and she'll owe the entire fee. And I was waiting to come back from France and I was looking at the time and it was coming up to nine. I was literally about to board and yeah, 9pm, she hadn't replied. We were like, well, that's it. We've got to, chaser for the fight and we did say it. we were like what happens now because i think it's the first time i've had this happen and ox was like well the whole week gonna call her and email her and then it's letters through the door and then it's caught you know she doesn't pay but she could have avoided that she could have just you know we made her a nice deal yeah. just pay this and then it goes away but instead she didn't reply so now it's like you're gonna have to pay twice as much but um yeah and it's mental I sometimes wonder, like, especially just with music, people seem to treat music and musicians differently than they would any other sort of business. Yeah. And um, that they think we're not there for the money. 
Yeah. I like, yeah, we enjoy what we do, but we do it to earn money. Yeah. To pay bills, especially yeah. playing weddings. Yeah. And I think what, what I've seen a lot of these sort of cancellation things and you can just smell the bullshit. Yeah. Straight off. Mm. And usually the bands and the agency, we are very good at going like, okay, we'll just sling us 500 quid. Yeah. And we'll leave it. But that's when you people have to have a little bit of class about them. Yeah. And it, but it is that thing of like, no, we should be entitled to the full, yeah, 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 to the full fee. Why are you not fulfilling your contract? And they kick up such a fuss. Yeah. And then you have the really difficult decision of like, do you just, you have to just either let it go. Yeah. And just go. I mean, I, a friend of mine had it once where on the morning of the gig, the client phoned up and said, really sorry, we we need to cancel the band. We yeah. just planned too much. I think they had two bands booked or something. They're like, we just, we just got too much stuff booked for this wedding. We need to cancel the band. And Taylor mm. were like, okay, you need to still pay. And they went, yeah, that's no problem. And they yeah. did it. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just bizarre how music... I bet, you, I bet you fucking pay the caterers. Exactly, you know exactly, I mean? exactly. Yeah. You know? And that's and another thing that's even more worrying about it is it's, it's tailored as well. It's a big corporation. It's a company, you know? And it's like, they're trying to get away with not paying... A company like that, as it like, and then well, you think the, of the bands that is, are on their own. The, the, the problem is, is so the client will have paid a deposit. Yeah, 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 and yeah. That deposit is tailored's agency. Yeah, fee. that's their card. So yeah. in some regards, and we had this a lot with COVID cancellations. Was tailored have got their money? Yeah, yeah. And it's what you want is tailored on the side of the band. Yeah, and when you. And that, and to be fair, a lot of the time they are, mm. and I know Chloe's been fighting your corner, mm. but ultimately it's the band that loses out. Yeah, yeah. Which is the the, the shame in it. It's the musicians. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've definitely had to fight my corner. Mm. We had one actually this last Christmas, a decade gig. They wanted it was a birthday party on Christmas, and they basically cancelled, saying, "Oh, the." the all their guests, people were worried about the Omicron variant of COVID, so they cancelled. Mm. They they didn't want to risk. No one wanted to come to risk getting COVID before mm. Christmas and and stuff. So they were like, "Oh, we want to cancel," and it was like, "Well, cool. Like le- legally, your party can still go ahead. So this isn't a force majeure." Yeah. And they were like, "Oh, we definitely want to rebook the band for like spring." Yeah. So I said, "Okay, but I know just from experience they won't rebook it." Yeah. They won't. So I said, cool, give us half the money now. Mm. And then when you rebook us, pay us the other half. Yeah. You know, it was going to be for like a Friday in spring, so like March, April. And they did. They agreed Mm. and they paid half the money and they never rebooked us. Yeah. yeah. And I was so fucking glad. Yeah. So I basically wanted like money to just cover the cost for the lost day of work. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was like I wanted that extra, that 50% of the fee to be a, that's your commitment yeah to rebooking us yeah and fulfilling the contract that technically we could go after you for the full amount yeah of course they never rebooked us no of course not you know it's but i'll say one more thing it's that thing of like you know we always say yeah musicians are treated differently but i think it's anyone in the arts i mean you know i've i've talked about it before but just because i know more about it now but the tattoo industry for example you know my partner gets the same thing it's like you know people pay deposits and then change their mind and she'll be like okay you're gonna have to pay a new deposit for your next and they're like can not just can you not just move that deposit she's like no that's what a deposit is and i think it's that thing of you know because you've added the studio as well people being like i won't say his name but that person that was like oh i'm a bit broke can i have my deposit back or can i have half of it back and it was like the deposit was nothing and i hate it because it's like I think it's when there's less of a barrier, you know, and it's that you sort of become friendly with the client and the client becomes friendly with the business and it's a smaller business. So people think, oh, I'll see if I can get a bit more. Whereas if it was a hotel or if it was a... Well, no one questions paying for their flight Yeah, when they book it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And like all we're asking for is a proportion to just reserve the studio, reserve the tattoo artist, reserve that mm. space on that day, reserve the band for that day. And that's your commitment. Yeah. That's your commitment that you will honour that. 
and it's the dissociation, I guess, that people have of like, well, you you do realise that you've booked us for that day. The band, yeah. the tattoo artist, the thing, any you know, the studio. So that means we can't do any other work that day. Yeah, yeah. Because we've got you booked in the diary, and if you just cancel or don't turn up, what are we going to do? Mm. Mm. I mean, I'd really, yeah. That's the thing. Like, obviously, you didn't go to Nottingham. No. And it is that thing of how, based on the client's email and the lack of replying and everything, they're clearly not going to pay it. No. They're not just going to go, okay, yeah, we'll pay it. Yeah, yeah. And the question has been, and I've seen this with other people, is how much do you fight it? Mm. How much do you go down the, 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 the route of... Essentially, do you take it all the way to the small claims court? Yeah, yeah. Because and it's a lot of time and effort, and you have to be really committed. And it isn't fair. It isn't fair yeah. that you're put. You're you're in that situation. You know, I I had a gig on that that same day, and it was like a really long day with acoustic add on. So we got mm. there at like half twelve. We were there till one a.m. Yeah, it was DJ add on. Like one thing about that gig was weird. So we did three forty minute sets. Yeah. In the evening. First set was at seven. Yeah. The last set was at quarter past twelve. <laughs> <laughs> and they wanted the set spread out evening through the night. So I think we did our middle set at like half nine. Yeah. We essentially had two hour breaks between each set. That's mental. Yeah. It was a real like this is a long day. But anyway, so I had a gig and you you told me about your Nottingham gig being cancelled and it was like mm. for a split second my brain's like, Oh, I wish my gig was cancelled tomorrow. Yeah. But in reality, it's like, no, I I'm glad mine's happening. Yeah. Because I don't want to have to have that fight. No. To try and get my money. I'll no. go to Swindon and I'll play the gig and I'll get paid. Yeah. I don't want this lingering yeah. cancellation where you you're at a point where you go, you you've got to fight it for probably quite a few months. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. get paid what you could have done in 12 hours. Yeah, definitely. By just definitely. playing drums. Yeah. And driving yeah. a bit. Yeah. And then... Yeah. So Is, isn't it funny though that when you get like when it looks like a gig's going to be cancelled, you immediately like settle into it though, and you go, Ooh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, cancelled. And then as soon then as that day, and then so yes, you know that day when you're not doing the gig, yeah, you you kind of go then, oh, this is weird. You have to consciously think that it's weird that you're now not driving tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You adapt so quickly. Yeah. To, you know. Oh, now I've got... And I'm sure people did it with the, the bank holiday for the Queen's funeral. Yeah. That was quite short notice, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. Monday off, cool. Yeah. It's weird to think, we, a week ago, you'd have been at work. But also, like, it's that thing of... You get so immediately like, oh, I'm not doing a gig, that if on the morning it was then like, oh, she's paid in full and you have to go to Nottingham now, I'd be like, oh, for fuck. Yeah. Sake. Do you know what I mean? Like, before I was just like, yeah, I'm going to Nottingham. Yeah. That's what's happening. And then how, it's like, yeah. How do you think about this? So like I mentioned, this, you know, tailored have provided me with a lot of gigs over the years, so I'm, mm. I, I'm not going to be too hard on them. But as I mentioned, like that deposit that the client pays is mm. essentially Taylor's fee. Yeah. So if the gig gets cancelled or not, Taylor'd have that money. Yeah. So if the gig gets cancelled, Taylor'd have the money in their position, so they just don't give it back, you know, as yeah. the deposit. I do feel, and especially this was like a COVID thing, and because so many gigs cancelled and other situations... I almost feel like part of that deposit should the deposit should be increased. Yeah. To cover a hundred quid each for the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's definitely. the tailored fee plus a hundred for each band member. That's your deposit. That's paid yeah. well up. That's paid when the gig is booked. Yeah. So if this cancellation happens, you can still go to court or you can still fight for full fee. Yeah. You've always got that cushion of, well, we have a hundred pound retained. Yeah, definitely. In all situations. Maybe I should speak to Taylor. I think that. that's a good idea because it's like I've because had... then you could go right. Well, this cl this woman's clearly mental. She's clearly bullshitting. Mm. So we'll, we we want to try and fight because it's a lot of money because yeah. it's a far distance gig with all that sort of stuff. Or you can go. Do you know what? We'll take the day off because we already know we've got a hundred quid guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think, think that, that would make a definite difference in. Yeah, because I I'd never until this year had gigs cancelled, and then this year I've had two within like a space of a couple of months and both gigs, we didn't get any money, you know, like the the one, the other month, it was like, yeah, don't expect anything like, and this one, 
may not be anything. I think we might get a bit of money because I think she's paid something else. I can't remember. But anyway, or we might not. But um, but yeah, it, it would be nice to know because it was because then otherwise you're like, well, now I've got nothing. And especially yeah. this time of year, where the yeah. kids are slowing down as we're coming out of wedding season. You know, I think I only got three left in the diary. Yeah. And two of them were quite last minute, actually. That's a it's a big difference. There's a big swing yeah, yeah, in yeah. monthly income. Yeah, yeah. Just even a few gigs. Yeah, um, definitely. But anyway, what did you do instead? Anything? What did I do? I don't think I did much. I think I I almost went so much the other way. I went, well, I haven't got a gig, so let's do nothing. And I got back from France the day before and was jet lagged. You know, jet from lag France. from France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a long distance. No, I just did laundry. But it was weird. But there was still that kind of like, should I be, am I going to get a text at five? It's like, hey, George, we're all here in Nottingham. Where, where are you? <laughs> you know, even though you know it's cancelled. Just it wasn't... constantly in the group. Just checking we're not going to Nottingham. Yeah, just no, because no, no one's one... in a car, are they? Yeah, no, no the one airport. wrote, we're not going. We just kind of went, is that it? And Ox just put, well, she didn't message me. And I'm like, yeah, but... <laughs> Is it cancelled? Isn't you know? it fascinating? I'd love because yeah, within the space of thirty six hours, that gig yeah. from from receiving that first point of contact of she's cancelling. Yeah, thirty six hours later, that gig would have been finished. Yeah, yeah. What has happened to them on that day? Yeah. What has what's gone on? Yeah. Imagine. I'd love to see. Yeah. Might have to look them up. Look them up on well, Facebook. Yeah, yeah. And see, but like. Was she, Taylor was will she, be doing that. Taylor, they will be. Yeah. Did she actually get yeah. conned? And was it the worst day of her life? Or did she have a great time because she was bullshitting? Yeah. And think I got away, I, you know, yeah. I saved two and a half grand or whatever. And as Ox said, where was the husband in all this? Yeah. Yeah. Where was, where was he? Yeah. I joke that he was the one con- who conned her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. down the pub. Definitely. I was like, what's that what's that BBC three program where the the groom has to organise a surprise Oh wedding? don't tell the bride? Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell the bride, I've completely fucked it up. Yeah. <laughs> I was down a pub, I was down a coach and horses <laughs> and I was Gary, yeah, you do weddings, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I'll do it all. Dance floor makeup. Yeah. Aisle, flowers. Yeah. That's yes. exactly how it happened, the peer pressure, because they did bring in their mates. Oh, and Steve, you do a bit, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you Get him to do it. Get him to do it. Don't get anyone else. And <laughs> you'll be like, down okay. Down. Yeah. yeah. If you're even down. slightly passive, you'd be like, fuck, okay. I'll, 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 I'll let them do my wedding. Yeah. So maybe, yeah. I might well, have to I want to hear, up. you know, keep us, keep us posted. I will. Should we take a look into the drum dumpster? Sure. It's and then we're going to play a pilot of my new game. <laughs> Can't wait. I'm excited. It could be absolutely rubbish. <laughs> but this is the place to try it out. What are we looking at the drum dumpster? Let's go and dive right in! What the hell is that? You got tossed into the right dumpster. Talk to me, Georgie boy. What you got? What you got? Well, after I finished my gig at the Phoenix Club the other week, I um, I finished and Joe said to me, why don't you think about getting an EAD-10? And I said, ah? He <laughs> said, why don't you think about getting an EAD-10? I said, what? He said, why don't you... Oh, wait, I'll stop that. He, um, I was like, what is that? And he was like, oh, it's like this... Oh, don't drum- you know? <laughs> Like yeah, and call yourself a drummer. Like, yeah, yeah, and uh, I was like, so "This what is brought is... to us by motorbike manufacturer Yamaha." E A D ten, and I'm pretty sure uh, Cy Lawrence from Strange Planes has one of these, and he mentioned it on yeah. the podcast and his interview, which we did a while back in July. Go check out Cy. That was a very funny interview with a man who hates music as much as me. But yeah, this is the Yamaha EAD-10. So what, what does it, it is... What it do, George? What does it do? Talk Fuck it out. Talk so to what me. it is... I've is just that... woken up for some reason. I know. This is, I've just sparked into life. This is great. I think I'm excited about my new game. Let's not get sidetracked, but what is the new game? No. Nope. All right. Dumpster. Stay in it, boy. It's hard. This is hard. This uh, where Where is all that come from? You're so excited all of a sudden. 
It's ba- well, what I can see is it's like you put it in the middle of your kit on the kick drum. Yeah. Mount it on the top of your kick drum on the batter side. Yeah. And it somehow mics the whole kit. Yeah. I'll read what it says. The sensor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's... What don't you get about that, George? Yeah. Right. The sensor unit of the EAD10 comprises a specially developed XY stereo microphone sensor and trigger sensor sensors, allowing you to capture a balanced recording of the sound of the entire kit by placing this at the center of the kit itself, which sounds pretty cool. And all the reviews are like, this is the most amazing thing in the world. So yeah, but he asked me that. He was like, why haven't you got one of them? Because we was only micing the kick as you tend to usually do. Sometimes you might the snare, you know, on those sorts of gigs. He was like, just get one of them. Does the whole kit. So he was talking about it in a live setting. Yes. So actually using it to mic your drums. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I just want to, you know, I'm on the Yamaha website. I'm just scrolling past the motorbikes to, so <laughs> mic your drum in seconds. Just attach the EAD10 sensor to any acoustic drum. I just think you'd still, the, yes, you can mic your whole drum kit up, but then you've got no... Uh, control over the individual elements. Yep. In terms of like, it's quite common for us at gigs to mic the kick drum and the snare. Mm. But a lot of the time, actually, you don't need to mic the snare because it's the room's not huge and it's quite reverberant because it's usually an old fucking barn or a, yeah. you know, there's <laughs> no acoustic treatment whatsoever. Yeah. But you need the kick drum. So the snare sometimes isn't even mic'd or it's just tickled. So I feel like you'd still want to mic the kick individually because if yeah. you've just got one mic, and you, you know, that's micing the whole kit. You bring that fader up. You're bringing up cymbals and toms, which you yeah. really don't need to bring up no. at a wedding gig. I think it would. Its better use would possibly be for rehearsals mm. to give yourself some the whole kit in your ears for in ears. Yeah. Um, even have it on your kit for in ears mm. and not put it out the front of the PA. Yeah, and have it for people can have the then they can have the whole drums in the in the ears, um, but then maybe you keep the kick and snare mic still mic them up separately, mm. or just for recording for rehearsals or recording for Instagram videos, recording yeah. solo stuff, you know, um, all that sort of social media bullshit stuff, mm. you know. Yeah, I do know, I do know. Um, but it also looked like it's got a module with it that you can do reverb effects triggers yeah um that you can then transform your drum sound because i think you've then got other clamps that other trigger separate clamps that you could put on your snare and your kick and then you can do live sort of triggering with them yeah and stuff and of course you can connect it to your phone and all that connect what happened to to just what happened to just playing drums boy well buying a good snare drum and hitting it well (laughs) I think I think this is what um, those days are over. I think this is what seems it seems too mad. You know what I mean? Like there is a simplicity to just micing a kick and snare, as you're saying. And this, it's like I don't know. It well, looks... I'll tell you what, we've got a uh, decade gig coming up. Me and you. Um, yeah. Is that confirmed? Um, I was going to ask you afterwards. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Don't mention when it is. <laughs> you'll, you'll throw you'll throw the MCU timeline into. <laughs> The D and D timeline into disrepair, <laughs> um, but it's at the boiler room in Guildford. Yeah, it's full PA and mic set up, baby. We yeah, use it there yeah, in house. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, and do you know what that means? What I've got sneaking suspicion? <laughs> Tom's a bit mic'd up, baby. Oh, hello. Yeah, what a treat! I think it's that gonna be exciting. basically like an originals gig in a proper original style venue. Yeah, but we're just playing decade. Yeah, so great. I don't even think it's a wedding. Yeah. Yeah. I think we just need to take our instruments. Oh amps. my god! Yeah. Not even a bass amp. No, there's a sound engineer who's gonna run us to the, the front of house venue. I'll tell you what's good about that. I'll gig. take a bass amp. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I will. yeah. Unrelated to that gig, I got two mates who live in Guildford area. Oh, well seen, done. I haven't seen in a while, and they were like, "Hey, we'll have to meet up soon." I'm like, "Yeah, come to Brighton." They're like, uh. "I'm like." Hey, I can come to your ends. And I looked it up and they both live 10 minutes from the gig venue. So pop into one house, pop into the other, gig back home. We can cut that out, but it's just quite nice, isn't it? It's just like... <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so yeah, Yamaha EAD10. Mm. Yeah. 
I think it is. It it all seems too like yeah together, as you said. What if you want more kick and less snare? What if you want more snare and less yeah. kick? And again, this is coming. You know, our opinions are completely ill-informed with absolutely mm. no research whatsoever. Yeah, two-minute um, look at the page. You know, Yamaha, yeah, prove us wrong. Prove us wrong. Looks like shit. Prove us wrong. Uh, right. I want to play a game. <laughs> I want to play a game. Have you got a jingle for this? No, not yet. We'll see if it works. Yeah, yeah I was yeah, thinking okay. maybe this is something we could play like regularly with guests and the, yeah, okay, okay. You know, have like yeah, a yeah. sort of yeah star in an averagely averagely priced car, whatever it was on Top Gear. Yeah, well, we were talking like about this, weren't we? How yeah. to make the guest bit funnier. So I've come up with a game, and I think it's absolute shit, <laughs> but it's based on pie or sausage. Okay. Life yeah. on the Road, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Brent film, uh, when he goes into the radio station. And this is, I need to come up with some sort of, there, there'll be a title out there with, with yeah. a pun that links these two things. But we found a few, you know, independent drum brands mm-hmm. over there, in the, in the, throwing them in the drum dumpster. Um, yeah, and this is car or drum. Nice. So I've just found some yeah. drum brands. Yeah. And some models of cars. Yeah. That I think are quite... And I want you to guess, car or drum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm ready. And maybe there's some sort of part, I don't know, like, I was trying to think of, oh, they've they've both got pedals. Yeah. There's like a pedal, pedal, pedal. If you're listening and can think of a good name, do you send it in? Yeah. What's better than car or drum? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Are you ready? Do you want to play? Yes. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> trying to think of a name yeah go on I'll focus yeah. on the game yeah there's 10 there's 10 to get Christ that is a lot so let's go see on. how many you can get I need like a ding button as well yeah okay are you ready <laughs> Trixon <laughs> uh drum correct mm-hmm. the cumbus the c- <laughs> cumbus <laughs> how are you spelling cumbus C U M B U S. Fuck off. Um, fuck. Ah, oh, car. Uh, wrong. Is it? It's a drum. Yeah. Okay. Through me. It had the word bus in it. Yeah. See. This is good though. Yeah, this is good. The Calibra. Calibra. It sounds more like a car. I'm That's gonna say it. car. It is a car. Yeah. Okay. The Brady. Bra- like Tom Brady? The Brady. Like B-R-A-D-Y. D-Y, yeah. Drum. Correct. Okay. The T-Rock. <laughs> T-Rock. What, just the letter T and then rock? Yeah, the T-Rock. I mean, that's got to be drum as well. It's a car. Oh, no. It's a Volkswagen, the Volkswagen T Rock. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Aoti. Hold on, quick question. So is it like car makes within a brand then? Yeah, so it's car models. Models, got you. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh what was this one? Because it would be shit if it was like Pearl, Volkswagen. Yeah. Right, right, I mean, right. What, you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's oh, so the drum brands are also like models within No, the drum oh. brands are drum brands. Right, right, right. The cars are models of car. Got you, got you, got you. Okay, cool. Um, what was Aioti, that one? Aoti, or the Aot, A Y O T T E. That's car. No, it's a drum. Oh, no, I'm going downhill. The Equus. Equus. Car. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the Ridgeline. Drums. No, it's a car. Oh, fucking hell. The jazz. The jazz. Well, that's that's got to, well, that's got to be a car to go against it. It is a car. Yeah. The Honda Jazz. And the final one, the Fibes. <laughs> F-I-B-E-S. Fibes. Uh, wait, say that again. F-I-B-E-S. F-I-B-E-S. Uh, drum. Yay. It's yeah. A drum. <laughs> Six out of ten. Oh, that's all right. I like that. That's it. good. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I reckon with a good jingle. Yeah. And a name. And I want I want live buzzers as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, uh. yeah. 
I thought I, I was hoping I'd get you with the T-Rock. Yeah. I thought that would be. I tried to find ones that were uh, could be ambiguous. Yeah. You didn't fall for my jazz trap. No. The Honda Jazz you got. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought it'd be weird to have a drum kit called the Jazz. Be a bit like... But you could. You could. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could. Brilliant. Yeah. Sweet. So, car or drum? Yeah, car or drum. Now, the question is, I guess... I've got to keep them. Oh, I don't know. I guess we've. I'm. I'm going to assume guests won't listen to this podcast. No. So I can use those ones again. Yeah. But maybe I'll throw you some extra ones. Well, I, I can. I can do some research, and we'll just make a massive list. Yeah. And. Uh, because you want it to be a sort of level playing field, you know. Yeah. With especially with guests who won't really care about listening to this. And exactly. Answers, but. So George Pickering, six out of ten. Six out of ten, that's all right. Yeah, happy with that. Yeah, very happy with that. Cool. I think that'll be a good game for uh anyone. Yeah, and if anyone's got uh, any name suggestions, send them in, drum and drummer pod at gmail dot com. Mm. Instagram, drum and drummer podcast, Twitter, yeah. at Bull Drummers. Get yeah. in touch. That'll do, won't it, boy? Yeah, that sounds that sounds good. Yeah. So lesson is if you book a band yeah. Pay a deposit and sign a contract. Yeah. Expect that contract to be uh, abided yeah. by. Simple. Yeah. Because we ain't got no other money. No. <laughs> we need the money. Exactly. Because some of us have Lego addictions. Exactly. You know, some people are running Ironmans. They're not free. Yeah. No. Weirdly I mean, expensive. Yeah. If you want to buy aero bars for your bike, that's 30 quid. Barely even use Straight them. Away. What is an aero bar? Makes you a little bit more aerodynamic, but no point. No point. Um, and there. Yeah. Have a good week, mate. You too. Um, and uh, yeah. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I'll keep you updated on uh, any gig updates on yeah. uh, Not if we gate. get the money. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll I'll stalk her. I look on forward Facebook. to the court transcripts. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> when this podcast gets brought into evidence. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Oh, you threw in the court case because you slagged you them off on a public them forum. Up, yeah. yeah. Oh, we now owe right. them money. And then the judge will go, "What's the list of numbers?" And they'll go, "Oh, don't worry, no one's heard it." Yeah, yeah, fine. exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, this yeah. is. Yeah. See you later. Week. Yeah, see you next time. <laughs> I can't wait. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for listening to Drum and Drummer. You can find us on Instagram at Drum and Drummer Podcast. And you can send us an email to drumandrummerpod at gmail.com. Remember, just pick up the sticks and twat it.